Hit one as well, but there's only one place to start, and that is with La La Land. We're going to hear from Damien Chazelle, Emma Stone, and Ryan Gosling after this clip. I got a call back. What? Come on. <laughs> For what? For a TV show. The one that I was telling you about earlier. The Dangerous Minds meets the OC? Yeah. Congratulations, that's really incredible. Exciting. I feel like I said negative stuff about it before. What? It's like Rebel Without a Cause, sort of. I got the bullets. Yes. You've never seen it. I've never seen it. Oh my. You know it's playing at the Rialto. Really? Yes. You should, I mean, I'll, I'll, I, can, I can take you. Okay. You know, for research. For research? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, Monday night, 10, 10 o'clock. Yeah, great. Okay. For research. Uh, well, I grew up playing jazz. I grew up listening to it and, and, and then starting to play it at a pretty early age, uh, especially jazz drums in my case. And that's where, yeah, that's where Whiplash came from. Uh, but I think that's also where just in general, this kind of interest in marrying jazz and film came from. My, my dad was very much into jazz when I was growing up. And so I think that's kind of where I was getting a lot of those sounds and stories uh, first and foremost. And then I had a very sort of formative experience with a teacher, you know, kind of uh, in my case in high school playing jazz drums, um, which uh, was definitely fodder for whiplash. Um, and, uh, but yeah, I think I just kind of became fascinated with not just the music, but the history of the music and, uh, and just the sort of mythology of some of those great jazz legends. Well, I think some days you definitely do think like, okay, I'm giving up. Today I'm giving up, but then you wake up the next day and being an actor is, it's such a great job. It's such an amazing, fun job. And there's also, thankfully, not the aspect of life or death to it. So it is, a, because it's creative, there's going to be rejection just kind of inherently. That's just part of, I think, any creative job. There's gonna be people that don't respond to the work you're doing, people that don't like what you're doing, but it can be so fulfilling just to be able, just to do it that, I think the thing that shifted for me in auditions was realizing just for, okay, for these five minutes, these 10 minutes, this is all I get to play the character. So in this time, I'm going to just play this character. If it doesn't work out, that's fine, but at least I'm getting to do what I love for these five minutes. And, um, and that sort of re-rigged my thinking because rejection after rejection after rejection, you just sort of have to you know, find a way to make it fun. We were just so lucky to get this film off the ground. I think we just felt a huge sense of accomplishment by doing that. And then the fact that there's been the response to it that there's been, that the audience is reacting in the way that they did, that they, that they are, that this, all the award stuff is really just kind of icing on the cake, you know? I think we just feel like, uh, you know, just the whole experience of this movie has been kind of like a movie. <laughs> Director Damien Chazelle, Ryan Gosling. Oh, he's so dreamy, isn't he? He really is. Oh, I love him. And Emma Stone. She's great as well. Yeah. I will say that much. Uh, speaking about La La Land, where do we even begin with this? I suppose we could start with the hype. The hype yeah. is always a good place to start with something that has been talked about quite as much as we have about this film. Joe, you kind of introduced it to our sphere of yes. film thinking. Yes. Um, obviously, we had some preparation because way before this, I, I think it was during a good two or three months, we watched like Umbrella of the Shibog and yeah. Younger's Rockfoot in, in like preparation for it. And yeah, just uh, we, it we was, fell, fell in love with those films. It was when the trailer first came out because I, yeah. I remember seeing it and thinking, this is gorgeous. I want to see it now. And you were like, well, if you want to see it now, those watch, are the way watch, you go. Yeah, and watch, I did, yeah. and they were amazing. Stunning, yeah. Yes. Uh, so we've we, we've we've hyped it a lot, so much so that I've been like it's all I've been speaking about, I've been thinking about it most days, watching the trailer a lot of times. When I saw Sully, I cried my eyes out with the trailer alone, uh, which is very sad. But uh, what was the actual film like? And more importantly, because some people might not know what it's about, or the fact that it's a musical, we've mm -hmm. got to stress that it's a musical for those who maybe aren't aware of it. Uh, what is it about, Ryan? Right. Well, uh, it is a musical, it as is. you say, and I think we need to preface this by saying it's a musical. It, it is a musical for people who don't like musicals. Yes, I think for a lot of it. Chazelle, think, Chazelle himself has made yeah, a good point. Because I know like, some people more than any other genre when they hear the word musicals, they go click mm. and they switch things off. So that's just that, that's a preface. It's so, because nobody tries it anymore, or, yeah, or, or people who do don't necessarily yeah, get it right. Yeah, was the last classic musical? 
probably Mamma Mia. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. So, to be honest, I like that just because it's Pierce Brosnan singing. But anyway, yeah, I, I do. Yeah. Come uh, on! <laughs> so, uh, Whiplash last year, well, actually, it was two, yeah, two years ago now, yeah, we saw the screen unseen. Uh, that left us with probably the most electric ending of the year. Yes. And uh, yeah, we were literally shaking after that. And that put Damien Giselle on the map after he made the short Whiplash and then made it as a feature film. La La Land started as a short as well. Did it? Yeah. There is actually a La La Land short. I, I read that in uh, Empire magazine. I did not know but that. Yeah, um, and then La La Land is second feature film. Uh, it it's, tells his, it's his third feature film, actually. There's one there's one before this that was, like, wasn't like was very big, but it's his, oh, it's his, it's his third film. Oh, yeah. well, it's, yeah, but it's his third feature film, uh, and it tells the story of Maya, who's an aspiring actress. Mia, Mia. come on. Yeah, okay, yeah. Played by Emma Stone, and uh, Sebastian, who's played by Ryan Gosling. He's a dedicated jazz musician who has just been sacked by his job on Christmas, and uh, because he, he wants to play sort of out there musical stuff, he wants to play his kind of jazz instead of the Christmas songs they're telling him to play uh, me otherwise uh, on the other hand doesn't really get many roles that she tries out for fails a lot of auditions because she's just another one in the crowd it's just poor circumstances yeah it's, just, it's just poor they're, they're struggling to make ends meet in, in the city which is you know it's the city of dreams but they're not making it's the city dreams. of stars yeah it's a city of stars <laughs> <laughs> like, nice one and it's a uh, it's, <laughs> too it's, obvious it's essentially just how it's about you know the, the everyday life of of these two people who want to be bigger and, and make their own dreams come true and mm. just uh, and what a joy yeah, pretty much. And They've both got the different reasons for like you know, right? Yeah, uh, uh, Sebastian kind of he just wants to make good music, and yeah. Mia wants to be like big and famous and stuff. They've both got yeah. different reasons, but they're both at the end of the day, it's just dreams. They both dream very big, yeah, which is quite cool. And I think the, the thing that sold me, uh, like uh, taking away all the bells and whistles of all the songs and all the colours and everything else, I think the, the thing that I liked most about this film was just the the way it portrayed the relationship between between Mia and Sebastian. I think the, the fact that it's they have the it's the chasing dreams versus the expectations of life mm -hmm. you know because they have they have these big dreams you know Sebastian wants to open what was the, the other name he wanted to call it uh, uh, chicken, uh, chicken, chicken and stick chicken, chicken and stick, stick. Yeah, yeah Maya wants to call it Sebs because you know yeah. she thinks that no one would go to someone called chicken and the stick yeah chicken, chicken and the stick, and stick yeah <laughs> and, and she just wants to be an actress um, and, and live up to her aunt yeah. Who, who, who uh, inspired her acting, her acting talents, and I think it's just it's really refreshing to hear something like that. It's not just like I know some people have said that this could have possibly ended up turning into sort of like a sickly sweet sort of white people problems mm. kind of thing, but I think it's just a really well told relationship. Yes, and I think I think that's just what what and without getting into spoilers because we can't do that. No, not at all. I think it's and we don't want to, but um, no, I think no. it's just you really do get the sense that these are two people that are helplessly in love and I think that that sort of transgresses to all of the parts of La La Land from the fact that they're not because they're not the most world class dancers and singers they're not mm. the most world class people in the world that they live in but they are just two people who I think they have it in them I yeah. think as as the film goes on yeah. they, they both kind of they both realise that they are yeah. I, th I think they are both they like world class just like sort of yeah. hidden away like undiscovered sort they, of they keep meeting each other by chance and that just leads into a blossom and love by these two people who have been treated poorly by the city mm. and want and have massive dreams and, it, and it's it's a wonderful wonderful thing to see and I think it's it's just that, that, that contrast between wish fulfilment and the reality of life and it's just really really good and there's a lot of talk in this film about nostalgia yes uh, and uh, the, the whole the whole thing is very nostalgic. Uh, there's, there's that there's that uh, line in, in the in what John Legend tells him in the trailer that you know you want to be you want to be a you want to be a revolutionary but uh, you're, so you're traditional. too much a traditionalist yeah. and jazz is about the future, and I think that's that that's the key theme of the film. It's the nostalgia of of it, and I know some people have been saying, oh, you know, La La Land is you know it's it's too much of a love letter to Hollywood to succeed, but nothing wrong with that. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with a bit of nostalgia because it's I've not just been, that. It's not just that. Yeah. There's, there's more to it than that. Like yeah. the nostalgic stuff is. Is the sort there of is set, a lot of it. it, it but there it's is, good. but it's the set dressing, isn't it? I yeah. mean, uh, I'll, I'll bring in Joe here because he's been talking yeah. for ages now. Uh, there's little references to Cherbourg. There's there's one. Um, yes. There's when they're when they're walking through the lots. There's mm. a shop that's Parapluie, which mm. is umbrellas. Mm. Uh, Oh yeah, go, how I want T ton, is, tons of saturated poppy colours, as yeah. well as obviously references to nostalgia or Hollywood. Obviously, uh, is it Mia? Obviously, when she comes in after her audition, she feels because of some coffee incident. Uh, you see, you know, you got Ingmar, uh, Ingrid Bergman on the ball. You've got yeah. tons of loads of old references. Her bedrooms to that. full of stuff. Full of yeah, all stars. She full says like obviously the story of the aunt. She saw like Casablanca and loads yeah. of old school films. Uh, yeah, but yeah, a lot um, of uh, a lot of fake posters made as well, like mm -hmm. sort of uh, reference in other films. Yeah. yeah. I mean, obviously, they go see Robo Without Cause as well, yeah, which yeah, yeah. also, yet again, is, 
it's full of little nostalgic callbacks, not just in the story, but also in the style as well. Like I said, Shabor got the poppy colours, you've got the old school Cinemascope uh, ratio, which I, I could not believe actually came up presented in Cinemascope. I was, they make a little uh, joke, don't they? It's like yeah, a tiny little frame. Yeah, and and then, whoosh, I was so happy when that happened. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's that's obviously me and the film. I was just looking forward to the technique, which I think Giselle does phenomenally with the Cinemascope frame, especially the opening number, the camera movements, the blocking, the frame. It just uh, all works together with musicals. That's me personally. I love musicals in that type of style because I think uh, cinematography wise, you can get away with tons of stuff and it yeah. just all works in concession with the movement. And like, like Giselle says, you know, you want it to be jazzy. And musical, which all works together, and it, yeah, I was just absolutely enthralled throughout the full film. The opening number, I have played on, well, yeah, open again and yeah. again and again, and it was fascinating as well, though, because uh, to see him use that kind of new technology uh, with iPhones and stuff like that. When you mm. see the behind the scenes, how he in the rehearsals he framed everything that way, just constantly moving about and just uh, absolutely well, exhilarating. I mean, the opening number particularly is is very extravagant, and I know it was very difficult to film because obviously. It's, yeah, it's it's a real road on a real yeah, and an earlier like highway, real freeway, yeah, and uh, they had to get the right time for the mm-hmm. sunlight. They didn't want to be too bright or too yeah. dark. It had to be spot on. Everything had to be really perfect. And people always say about like one take shots in films or like or Victoria like one take for mm-hmm. a whole film, as if it's like some kind of revolutionary thing. Musical oh, back no. in the day. I mean, I mean, that's how it was done. Yeah, they were going for minutes. Kelly would shoot. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's obviously there's the scene that's been talked about when they're looking for the Prius, which I think that's like that clocks in at about seven or eight minutes. Just mm-hmm. uh, you've got to get just all in concession with the the camera movements. They're just getting everything perfect with the dance moves and then getting especially with the light as well to try and get it all within the golden hour of like pink glow. Yeah, of Los Angeles, like Ellie is just absolutely spellbinding yeah especially the, the scene on the bench is the big the number then like, yeah you, just, you, wow. you can't believe that that's like real mm-hmm. it's, it's it's astonishing yeah I think the, the, the level of detail on a technical level from this film that Chazelle being somebody who loves musicals and obviously cares very much about making his own that is going to be living up to them yeah everything it's on that frame is there for a reason it's all framed perfectly it's all done very meticulously and I have mm. so much praise for that yeah Big time, but uh, I mean, we've, we've we've spoke about relationship and technical. The two meld together very well. Mm-hmm. I think that Hollywood always considered very r- romantic setting. Always th- those kind of films that it references very romantic. This couple uh, and and Ryan Gosling and Emma Stone just bring so much to it. And this mm-hmm. is their third time working together. And I was just saying to somebody today, th- I mean, th- these kind of combinations don't happen so often as they did back in the day. Had you know Bogart and Bacall, all that kind of stuff, Ginger and Fred, and these two could do it. Mm-hmm. I'd, my, my 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 worry is with La La Land is that it would trigger a chain of these kind of films being made that were inadequate, that were like subpar. I yeah. hope this doesn't kickstart a trend of musicals being made that just piggyback on its success that are inferior. Mm. I worry about that. Mm. But it, I think these two, a... with Chazelle, could make this kind of revolution. Mm-hmm, if hopefully. they could sustain the level of quality, I'd be, I'd be well up for that. I would like to see, even though it wouldn't be up to scratch, I would like to see more musicals done this style. Because Absolutely. I think, I think, I think yeah... Technically, with musicals, you can just do so much, and I've always, I've always wanted to create like a musical or in some way, shape, or form. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, just technicality, story-wise, uh, surprisingly funny as well. I did find myself yeah, laughing a lot during yeah, the film. It's, it's hilarious. Um, yeah, just phenomenal spellbinding. Came out of the cinema, info like literally all of us in formation, wanted to dance, and just yeah. like, came back to reality and just like, oh, there's just no, there's just no way that anyone could be in a bad mood after this. You, you well, just I, not, it's, I, 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 it's like what Joe's saying. The sort of film hangover is yeah. mm-hmm. is is one of the the biggest. But funnily enough, I, as, as soon as the film finished, I'd, I got on the bus, and I think somebody who'd been in the same screen and was on the bus as well, and they were whistling the little. <laughs> mm. and I was like, oh, but I did sort of like skip home. I just yeah, wanted to be but, a music, but completely. very slowly. We, just we like, were in the car on the way back, and as soon as we got back, what the soundtrack on? Yeah. Just, oh, as soon as, as, as soon as we got back like, in the house, straight on the, the soundtrack. Whole thing's just incredible. I mean, I, I haven't seen a music in a long time. Like the last one I probably watched was years ago but I think this is definitely going to get me back in the swing of things because yeah. I used to love musicals mm. this is the right kind of thing it's just infectious isn't it it's the perfect storm of, of really catchy really good musical song original talent music disposable as well. that original. relate to the plot and are original and are really really infectious and likeable characters and it's just it's the perfect storm to make it not just a really good film but a really good musical as well yeah, and absolutely. I think after the year we had last year and the year that the world had in 2016 this is mm. you know it's it's the electric shock to the heart that you needed it's the film to you light deserve. people up mm. yeah yeah 
and then hopefully people will look at Jack Demi's films because there's only so far there's only uh, Shaborg and Rockford but there is, there is he's got loads more which I cannot see yet because mm-hmm. <laughs> it's not here in the UK no. sadly it is, it's really annoying <laughs> yeah uh, but on Ryan Goslin and Emma Stone I think this this I mean they're both nominated for uh, they both won Golden Globes I should say they're both mm. nominated for BAFTAs oh, yeah, yeah. They're probably get, well. They're de- almost definitely going to get nominated for the Academy Awards. Yeah. I think this proves that Ryan Gosling is like one of the most versatile actors. Oh, yeah. He is like is the triple, quadruple, whatever you want threat. Singing, dancing, acting. He's very funny, very sad. Uh, I, I think he's one of my favorite actors. I think this this is kind of confirmed. And Emma Stone as well. Just both of them just doing these amazing things. I, I like I like their integrity yeah. and their and their talent as well. Uh, I, I I don't know if this is going to be beaten. Like it's early on, but I think I don't know. Mm. I'm gonna go see it again as soon as I can. Yeah, I, I will likely watch it again. Yes, I, I very rarely do that. So that's La La Land. Mm-hmm. It's an obvious recommend. 100%. Ridiculous, yeah. yeah. But I also, mean, like I know, it, like just watch the other films that reference. Yeah, also, well. also, also yeah, get get them for your fix. Because I mean, especially Shabog. I think everybody needs to see.